The DC Fan Dome event kicked off on August 22nd, 2020 with some pretty great news and reveals. There's another game that might be added to the Arkham series called Gotham Knights. Wonder Woman 84 got a new trailer. It's, it's mostly the same thing. Maxwell Lord uses his magical powers to make himself the president. He brings back uh, fucking Chris Pine from the death probably when Diana tries to stop him. Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is a thing I'm very excited for, got a trailer. I don't know, I've wanted to see it since I heard that it was a thing, so I'm fine with this. And there's some new stuff about Batman, maybe. I don't know, at the time of writing this, I haven't really seen anything but a few photos, but it looks great. And the thing I've been looking forward to the most, the Suicide Squad. So, I'm going to go through the newly released Suicide Squad sneak peek video. Flame by flame. So, for those of you who were unable to attend the DC Fandom livestream, James Gunn appeared on screen and uh, introduced the entire cast of his film, played a game of trivia where Viola Davis and Joel Kinnaman split the cast in the teams, and poor Pete Davidson was picked last. It feels like high school again. It totally feels like high school! I'll just watch. Pete, this is sad! Click the victory cigarette. Oh, man. Yeah, okay. I relate way too much to that. And during this time, they revealed the characters, uh, some interesting information pertaining to the story, uh, some just funny bits of these people trying to play trivia against James Gunn. Okay. I know both of you have know so much about the lore of DC Comics. <laughs> and uh, a behind-the-scenes featurette. And that is exactly what I'll be talking to you today about. But before I get started, make sure you like this video and a comment about, I don't know, whatever you want. How's your dog doing? What's the weather like where you're at? Do you like movies? If you don't, why are you watching this video? I'll start off with the character introduction. We get a return of Viola Davis as Amanda Waller, reprising her role from the 2016 film Suicide Squad, which was met with ambivalence and it was alright ness Joel Kinnaman also reprises his role from the same film as Colonel Rick Flagg, but this time he's rocking a yellow t-shirt, and he also got rid of that ridiculous mustache soul patch combo and grew out his hair. I can only assume he broke up with June Moon and is now living the Bachelor lifestyle. The yellow shirt is also a reference to John Ostrander's original Suicide Squad run, which James Gunn has stated he is a very big fan of. Next is Michael Rooker as Savant. Savant is a creation of Gail Simone during her run on Birds of Prey. Great series, you should definitely check that out. Uh, Savant, he's the heir to an enormous fortune. At some point, he moved to Gotham City and became a vigilante until Batman told him to knock that shit off because he he wasn't really protecting people that well. So, like Syndrome in The Incredibles, he became an anti-hero slash villainous character who used his computer whiz skills to blackmail people. He also has a chemical imbalance in his brain which creates a non-linear memory and causes him to just sort of forget things. An example of this is when Savant, now rehabilitated and working with the Birds of Prey, is captured and tortured for days, but in his mind it was only a couple hours. German comedian and musical weirdo Flulaborg. Mama Juice! You get all the Mama Juice and then you grow up and you are big boy and big lady. Not like big, but pretty. You are pretty lady. Stars as Javelin. Javelin is a Len Wein, Dave Gimmids creation from their Green Lantern series. Uh, Javelin once stole a jet-powered solar aircraft from the Ferris Aircraft Company, but was captured by Green Lantern. Later, he agreed to join the Suicide Squad and fought against the goddess Cersei when he died. Just kidding, he actually lived and came back and fought Deadshot, but was killed. Just kidding, he actually survived that, joined the Suicide Squad again, but Javelin was hit by a car and died. Just kidding, he came back in 2009 for this event called Cry for Justice. Margot Robbie reprises her role as Harley Quinn. Her outfit seems to be directly influenced by Harley Quinn of the video game Injustice 2. Uh, I don't know what her dress outfit is supposed to be, if that's a reference to something, and I just don't know. The only thing I can maybe think of is when Harley Quinn wore this, like, weird skirt thing? And like a vest, I think? I can't really remember it. David Desmulchen, fuck me. <laughs> David Desmulchen stars as Polka Dot Man, making his second appearance in a DC film, the first being The Dark Knight in 2008. Yeah, he's that guy. He also follows Michael Rooker as a star of both the MCU and the DC film universe. Are they, are they, are they still calling it Worlds of DC or whatever it was? Who, who knows? 
Polka Dot Man was a man named Abner Krill who somehow got his hands on this polka dot suit. The polka dots, once removed, serve a variety of purposes, from deadly weapons to other deadly weapons to a twister man. Polka Dot Man died in Final Crisis Aftermath when his head was crushed by a manhole cover. Daniela Melchior is Ratcatcher 2. This version of Ratcatcher, unlike the original, is a woman. Who knows what this rat catcher will be like, but the original was able to train and communicate with rats and began a rat army. Uh, he also knew chemistry. Idris Elba stars as a psychopath named Bloodsport. Born Robert Dubo, he was a Vietnam draft dodger, which forced his brother to take his place. But when his brother was severely wounded overseas, it caused a psychotic breakdown in Robert. Lex Luthor would later outfit Bloodsport with a device that allowed him to teleport any weapon he could imagine into his hands. With this, Bloodsport was tasked with killing Superman, so he killed 25 civilians as a way to draw out Superman, and Bloodsport used a kryptonite needle firing gun to take him down. In the fandom live stream, James Gunn and Idris Elba reveal that Bloodsport is in prison for shooting Superman. Which of your characters is in prison for shooting Superman? Bloodsport. Bloodsport. That's correct! Bloodsport yeah. is in prison for shooting yeah. Superman! During one of the trivia questions, uh, the cast was asked who brings the most weapons to the fight or something like that. Idris Elba, right off the bat, so excited, goes, Oh! Oh! Me! Bloodsport! So I can only imagine that he also has this weird technology that allows him to teleport weapons to him uh, in the film. Character? Oh, this isn't fair. Oh well. Question, which character goes into the mission armed with the most weaponry? Let's Oh, well, isn't it polka yeah. dots? Polka dots got all the, all the, all the dots that can do uh, uh, bombs. No, more of a condition. Polka dot can do, like, he's got hundreds of weapons on him. Well, it's just one weapon, it's polka dots. Oh, it's Bloodsport polka dots. pulls off all the different kinds of weapons. <laughs> one of the guest stars to ask a question was Storm Reed who plays a character in the film named Tyla. She was referred to by Idris Elba as my daughter, so I can only assume that there will be a somewhat similar situation to Deadshot from the first Suicide Squad. Guys, so now I have a serious question for you guys. I'm gonna test your smarts. Who shot Superman? That is Storm Reed, my daughter. And Bloodsport's helmet, it, it kind of looks like a xenomorph. Steve Agee mocaps and voices King Shark. King Shark first appeared in Superboy number nine, technically Superboy number zero, but that was apparently a, like a little cameo appearance thing. And more recently, he was played by Ron Funches in the Harley Quinn TV show. What did you say to me? Oh, I have not turned my back on the aquatic world. It turned its back on me. Oh, well, you can kindly go fuck yourself. He's a, he's a giant shark man. What do you want from me? Mei-Ling Nagi plays Mong Gal, daughter of Mongol, ruler of War World, and an alien conqueror. She died in Green Lantern number 8 in 2016. Nope, that's not the right date. In 2006. Peter Capaldi stars as The Thinker, a Flash villain who was also part of the Injustice Society. The Thinker is able to model and predict anything that will happen in the world at the price of his brain energy draining the rest of his body, causing him to age prematurely. So you can probably expect some sort of joke about how he's probably, like, 25. This thinker takes visual cues from the 2014 Suicide Squad series, as the original thinker was a weird computer man. Alice Braga plays a woman named Sosori. I have no idea who this character is, but I do have a few ideas that I'll discuss later in the video. My boy Pete Davidson plays Blackguard. Richard Dick Hurts get it, was a Booster Gold villain who first appeared in Booster Gold number one in 1986. Black Guard has the power to create a mace and shield out of pure energy. He was decapitated in Suicide Squad number seven in 2008. The Nathan Fillion plays TDK, which might stand for the detachable kid. Or maybe it stands for throwing dick kid, because he can get rid of, he can detach his, his body parts. Not sure, he's actually arm fall off boy. He has the ability to detach his own limbs and then use them as blunt objects. The original arm fall off boy was from the 31st century and tried to join the Legion of Superheroes. Sean Gunn plays this disgusting freak known as Weasel. John Monroe became a serial killer when he murdered several Stanford students. He was incarcerated at Bella Reeve and joined the Suicide Squad. During a mission, however, his creepy bloodlust caused him to go into a frenzy 
and he caused the apparent death of Thinker. Rick Flagg Jr. then wore the Thinker's helmet in an attempt to salvage the mission, but a psychic imprint of Thinker took over Flagg's body and made him kill Weasel. Jai Courtney reprises his role as Captain Boomerang from the 2016 Suicide Squad. Boomerang is another Flash villain who began a criminal career centered around his amazing ability to use boomerangs. He just so happens to be Australian. Captain Boomerang has the best choice of survival of this film, as in the comics, he's survived just about every iteration of the Suicide Squad team that has existed. John Cena! <coughs> Stars as Peacemaker, described as Douchey Captain America. Peacemaker loves peace so much that he's willing to kill for it. The extremist pacifist Christopher Smith was the son of a secret Nazi war criminal. Throughout his life, Smith experienced both visual and auditory hallucinations of his father, urging him to just, like, commit crimes and violence and whatnot. Peacemaker also suffers from bipolar disorder and possible schizophrenia, believing that the souls of people he has killed inhabit his helmet and speak to him. And that is the Suicide Squad. Now let's get into the actual behind-the-scenes video. My theory for the plot of this film is that there's something going on in a Latin American or South American country, most likely some sort of experiment that has to do with metahumans, and the Task Force X are ordered to destroy the facilities and or murder slash capture the dictator slash scientist in charge. It seems very evident from most of the scenes featured in this video and the roles of Joaquin Cosio as General Mateo Suarez, and the aforementioned Sosoria. Starting off the aforementioned frame-by-frame -frame analysis that I did. I spent several hours doing this, I hope you're happy. I hope you like it. There are some quick shots of just miscellaneous sets. This storyboard features the beachfront attack, DDK using his ability to detach his limbs, and from these images, it looks like his limbs can just fly around on their own, or he's controlling them in some way. I don't know, but I love it. Also, another thing I want to know is that I don't, I don't really recall ever seeing storyboards for a film that are like these computer-generated scenes. In the storyboard, we also see Harley Quinn doing something. Kind of looks like she's throwing something or like looking at the camera. Maybe it's like a POV shot of like she throws something and it flies through the battlefield and we follow it. I don't know. Oh, and uh, of note, Savant is there looking around and then he just decides to run back into the ocean. Uh, he probably didn't expect this giant gunfight to happen and is looking to escape, and that will cause his head to explode and him being the first casualty. Based on how James Gunn talked to Michael Rooker during the uh, panel interview, it's hilarious. I love those two, you should go watch it. Um, it just doesn't seem like Michael Rooker's in this film for very much, so I assume he dies first. But you see it, and I am grateful for everyone out there in the DC universe who came and uh, and checked out and hung out with us for a little while and saw this train wreck that would have gone perfectly smoothly if not for Michael <laughs> Easy. Hey guys, which team member would you sacrifice first? Rooker. Correct answer. Rooker. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. You are you serious? <laughs> Is that what you said, Steve? That's what I said. What's the answer, what? Jen? I would have to go with Savant because he's played by Michael Rooker, and if anyone here has ever had to spend a day working with Michael Rooker, I think they'd probably have the same answer. <laughs> you know what? People are always like that. They always want to get rid of the, the most dangerous one first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I understand yes. where this is <laughs> coming from. Right. Here are a couple of scenes of like weird vats of liquid, which allude to my theory that there's some sort of metahuman or just genetic experiment going on in this place. Two scenes that show how the beach assault begins. It features Blackguard walking towards the soldiers with his hands raised. I assume the rest of the squad are in cover somewhere. Uh, Blackguard's powers seem to be more gun-related than his comic counterpart. So, <laughs> either he kills the soldiers or dies immediately right there. And he's the second or third death in the film. And once shit just starts kicking off on the beach, Harley Quinn can be seen hiding behind a barrier as Boomerang and Javelin fight. I can easily see at least three or four members of the team dying immediately during this scene. Probably Arm Fall Off Boy, uh, Blackguard, maybe Javelin, but like I said earlier, he'll come back like later in the film. And probably Mongal. I haven't seen her in quite a lot, so she probably does. I suspect this guy is a victim of Boomerang. Maybe the Boomerang 
loops around his head before flying back to Captain Boomerang's hand and just slices his brain open. A savant can be seen hiding, and later in the behind the scenes video we see a scene of him lying like in the water along the beach looking scared or worried. So this is part of the scene of that storyboard that we saw at the beginning. Uh, after this he'll run out into the ocean and probably blow up. Or maybe he gets eaten by King Shark. Assuming that this set is the same as that large tower, it seems like Polka Dot Man makes it pretty far into the film, although the costume change on Harley could represent that these are two different missions or that there's just a passage of time. It might be they'd have to go in the, like, civilian clothes or something, maybe. There's a quick scene of Harley, Bloodsport, Polka Dot Man, and Ratcatcher racing down a deserted street. The scene of Harley Quinn killing a lot of people is actually in the same country as the beach scenes, so you can probably disregard that previous statement I made about these being completely separate missions. Uh, I tried to do some sleuthing and figure out what country this flag is or what it could be based on, but it could be the German Grand Duchy of Würzburg, or it could be these three places. Uh, number one, it could be Tropador first appeared in Wonder Woman number 314. It's a Central American country that had a covert U.S. military operation that was apparently attempting to overthrow a warlord named Colonel Montez. Two, San Monte first appeared in Action Comics number two when Clark Kent reported on a war going on between the country's government and some sort of rebellion. Number three, Hasadagwe, I guess. Not really much about this place I could find. It's just it's just a Latin American country. Or it's, it's just... Uh, this country in the film was just completely new. Back to the beach assault scene, Harley Quinn somehow brought a rocket launcher with her and uses it in the vicinity of Mongal. It could be related to this giant explosion in the following scene, but I think that may be unlikely just based off the explosion itself. I think this is Ratcatcher in civilian clothes, which means that the Suicide Squad has to go undercover in this blue bus, like I mentioned earlier, they have to wear civilian clothes. Or it could be that Ratcatcher isn't actually part of the Suicide Squad and just decides to help them. Maybe she's orphaned or something because of the military experiments, like she's from that nearby city. The military installation where the Suicide Squad is brought before deployment is amazing. That's all I have to say. I just love this giant American flag on the wall, and I'm... I, I am so sure that there is just going to be some sort of general Patton reference in this scene. This scene of Suicide Squad walking in the rain is, um, in, I believe, in the courtyard of that giant tower. Those still alive are King Shark, Ratcatcher 2, Rick Flag, Bloodsport, Harley, Quinn, Peacemaker, Thinker, Polka Dot Man, and whoever this is. Next scene depicts John Cena practicing a fight in that very same courtyard of that giant tower. Peacemaker and possibly Bloodsport stand opposite of a man burning to death. This is in that jungle village shown at the very beginning of the video. I tried to see if this burning person was anyone of note, but all I can really make out are hand wrappings, and even that could just be for the stunt person. Uh, odds are it's most likely just whoever is inhabiting this village at this time. A sweet shot of Bloodsport's weird gun like, does it have eight barrels? How does this gun work? Flew the Borg messing around with a javelin at the military complex. In the background, we can see Sean Gunn in his mocap suit for Weasel, uh, two guards, and TDK. Enhancing on the soldier's cap, I thought that the logo might be Project Cadmus, but I don't think so. I think it's just some military logo that they're using. A random scene of Bloodsport waking up in the middle of the night in the jungle could be, uh... Oh, fuck, I don't know. It could be anything. <laughs> could be Weasel sitting in the corner jerking off. Savant exiting an APC at the military complex and Harley exiting the blue bus. We'll later see a finished scene of Savant getting out of the APC. I imagine based on the danger of everyone on this team, they probably go in separate APCs. So there's like 10 of them just rolling up. It's like the it's like the opening of like the Bachelorette or something where it's just limo after limo of person. Ratcatcher 2 lying in rubble after some kind of explosion, I'm sure. This scene is really interesting. Uh, at first glance, I thought it was a woman dressed like Alice from Alice in Wonderland and was very confused. But after further inspection, I see that it's a hospital gown and that there are two other figures, one huddling over in the corner and another against a post. Uh, these are either current test subjects, future test subjects, or food slash, hey, let's see how this experiment we're working on affects people. Uh, fodder, I guess. Another rainy scene depicting Harley Quinn stabbing a soldier with a staff. Uh, there's a small orange sticker on the staff, which indicates that it'll need motion tracking of some sort for some kind of effect. Uh, I'm gonna go with blood or heart being ripped out. 
Another scene of the beach fight. Get a lot of those in this video, so be prepared. Harley running through explosions that seem to be similar to this scene. So it probably isn't from her RPG. I really like that Captain Boomerang has glowing boomerangs. It's very cool and awesome. Uh, there's also a dead body lying in the sand, and it kind of looks like Blackguard. Hmm. Rick Flag is back and rocking a yellow t-shirt with a little cartoon rabbit. Uh, if you have any idea what that rabbit is saying, please let me know, because I can't tell at all. It looks like Latin. A couple more costume shots of Bloodsport, Harley. Harley con continues to have her daddy's little monster tattoo. Finally, we get the big boy. Oh, this is the scene I've been talking about. There's at least like five people down here surrounding this giant military fort tower thing. This is my favorite scene. I love this tower after watching this fucking behind the scenes video as many times as I did. I am in love with this giant tower. It means the world to me. There's some Humvees rolling up, so there's more troops coming in. It's probably the general maybe. Uh, looks like this destruction over here was pretty recent, which is probably why Ratcatcher was lying in the rubble. She was caught in it. This scene is definitely going to be a parody of the right stuff walking scene, although it's odd that this isn't the whole team. There is a large gap on the right. Uh, might be for Killer Shark. Although Taika Waititi is also in this film, and we still don't know who he is. So maybe it's an all CGI character. What if... Okay, James Gunn was talking about how much he loves Batmite during the... Uh, the DC fandom panel. What if Taika Waititi is playing Batmite? No, oh, that's just food for thought, I guess. Batman fan. And I'm going to tell you who my favorite villain was. And maybe it's a little embarrassing, but I'm not embarrassed by it. It was Batmite. I loved Batmite. I thought he was hilarious and creepy as heck. And don't think I didn't think about putting the uh, Batmite in the Suicide Squad because I did. Ratcatcher 2, Bloodsport, and Harley stand in the rubble of my, my beloved tower. <laughs> Polka Dot Man and Shark have a dance off. And finally, we get a shot of the complete Suicide Squad. <laughs> King Shark is my favorite. Look at his cute little shark head. Amanda Waller walks to the west block of what I assume is Bella Reeve, along with two women and Tim Heidecker. Back at that jungle village, Alice Braga and sexy Joel Kinnaman can overlook something- Oh my god, he has an Audi! Another beach scene that shows the earlier storyboards of TDK taking off his arms, and we see Blackguard, which just adds to my theory that he dies right off the bat because he's standing right next to that same rock that we saw the body lying next to in the boomerang scene. A scene of Ratcatcher 2 being beautiful. Oh my god, this film is really gonna make me crush hard on Daniela Melchior. Weasel being a creep in prison, fitting based on my comment about Daniela Melchior. This scene is odd, I can't tell where this is. Some some kind of underground complex, maybe it's my tower. The scene features a fist fight between Peacemaker and Rick Flagg. So that's interesting, this could be <laughs> about anything really. Peacemaker could be breaking down and or betraying the team. Uh, later in this video, we see a continued scene of Rick Flagg fighting against Peacemaker in yet another underground tunnel. There's another scene of Peacemaker in some sort of auditorium raising his hand. Uh, this might be him in a branch of the military, as in the comics, he worked for a secret military project, and this is like him getting a debriefing on the Task Force X situation. We get a couple more scenes of Peacemaker making some peace. Uh, his sword has some motion capture dots on it, which means those soldiers are getting sliced. Again, this seems to be the giant tower courtyard. The next two scenes show Bloodsport and Peacemaker walking through the jungle village. Uh, Peacemaker's pants are covered in blood, and he's about to shoot this unarmed man. There's also some wire work on John Cena, so something's gonna happen there. Either he's going up or coming down. Bloodsport also has this weird cable in his hands. I'm, I can't really tell what that is. Unless it's a jump rope that slices people in half, like Pedro Pascal's lasso in Kingsman 2. We get a clean shot of the military deployed at the same courtyard of the giant tower. This seems to be that front entrance area based on the background. Ratcatcher gets a fun little scene with a child that shows their humanity. I say there because I don't know for sure whether or not this is Ratcatcher 2 or not. It kind of makes sense that this is Ratcatcher 1 meeting the orphan Ratcatcher 2 in some sort of flashback. Uh, maybe it's when she's in the rubble of the base. This scene is another tricky one. It, it looks like it's some kind of office building, but this pillar here is clearly stone. Where's that water coming from? Who knows? Probably the ocean, maybe a large community pool. Uh, a later scene has Bloodsport running away in the same office space as gallons and gallons of water do shoot down from a hole in the ceiling. Uh, we get another scene later of a explosion going off. My theory is that this is, again, in the tower. 
but this section has been reworked as a kind of office slash medical research slash just work environment. We can see cables and fluorescent lights, uh, but also in this cubicle are numerous files and papers. And in this scene of some soldiers dying, we can see a little green soccer ball. Who is bringing this to work? We have a zero tolerance policy on cubicle sports ever since Salcedo from section C6 broke the copy machine. At the base of my favorite tower, some sort of explosion causes these soldiers to fly back from the entrance into a sea of Home Depot boxes. There's like three or four or eight different angles of this shot throughout the entire video. We get a better look at the beach explosion, and this time it's revealed that there is at least one crazy looking attack chopper in the skies. Another scene of my beloved tower's courtyard, the military fleeing from explosions or perhaps the partial destruction of the tower. I assume that this guy is General Mateo Suarez. A beautiful looking shot of Bloodsport and Ratcatcher 2 standing in the debris of the tower. From the background you can see the compound wall and the nearby city. I think that's Ratcatcher 2 with Rick Flagg at some kind of control room. Either this rubble is from the squad saying enough bombs or some sort of experiment that's destroying the tower. Uh, don't worry about Rick from the looks of it. It would appear the teams are just separated. Maybe it's Ratcatcher 2 ends up with Bloodsport while Rick gets stuck with Peacemaker. A different angle of Harley running across the beach from an explosion and her jumping off of a rock away from yet another explosion. Can't really make out what's happening in the background, but I believe it's their... I can't really make out what that is in the background, but it sure looks a lot like the VTOL that they were in has crashed into the beach. Polka Dot Man and Bloodsport in the office space. I'd reckon Polka Dot Man might be the reason behind all those explosions. Maybe he even has something to do with all the water. King Shark eating a man, again in the jungle village. Polka Dot Man being saved by Harley in an office cubicle. Polka Dot Man, Peacemaker, Bloodsport, Ratcatcher 2 taking someone by surprise at the jungle camp. Uh, could be Sosoria's tent. Perhaps they're trying to rescue Rick Flag, or they think it's like the general's tent and it's the right tent that they're busted in on, but it's actually that cocaine tent from Tropic Thunder. The aforementioned VTOL drop-off scene, uh, Harley before her hallway gunfight. Bloodsport in another explosion in the cubicle room. Mongal during the uh, beach assault scene. I cannot see her lasting very long. Uh, yeah, I, she's dying. Uh, this immediately cuts to Savant watching the scene of Captain Boomerang chucking boomerangs. So this is obviously after Blackguard dies, Savant gets freaked out, tries to escape. Uh, the VTOL probably blows up and then he dies. Here we see Michael Rooker looking like Woody Harrelson. Uh, remember the scene earlier where I said John Cena had suspension wires on? Well, this is just prior to that scene. And then there's this like this big team run up charging scene. I can't really imagine this is actually for anything in the film. Like, what would this purpose of this be? They're against a white screen, but they have Killer Shark there as well in his whole mocap suit. Maybe it's like some kind of montage? Another scene of my favorite tower. Polka Dot Man, Thinker, Peacemaker, Harley, and Bloodsport walk through the rain as Bloodsport, I assume, teleports some kind of bow and arrow or maybe like a grenade launcher or something into his hands, and he shoots it at the base. Pete Davidson's black guard dies in a platoon reference, I am calling it now. Another shot of the gang walking like badasses, Nathan Filling is rocking that pib. This scene is most likely after the explosion when the tower begins collapsing. Bloodsport rides the rubble and finds Ratcatcher 2. We see the team walking towards the VTOL, but again, Bloodsport, Harley, The Thinker, King Shark, Peacemaker, Ratcatcher, and Polka Dot Man are all absent. Could this be a prior mission, or are the others just met later on after this? My favorite of scenes, the ones which have to do with towers, is just a similar shot of the army retreating from it. Uh, could be something to do with Ratcatcher, maybe? Makes maybe some sort of chemical smoke? Then there's just a shot of some guy with glasses on. I don't know what this really has to do with anything. After the panel, James Gunn tweeted two different versions of the Suicide Squad poster. The main differences I spot are that Bloodsport and that Ratcatcher have masks. Uh, Harley Quinn also changes her outfit. And like some of the characters are slightly moved around. This poster also seems likely to be a reference to issue two of the aforementioned Ostrander Suicide Squad. And also maybe the poster to Dirty Dozen. I, I got that one on Twitter. James Gunn also revealed that the release date is going to be August 6th, 2021. And that's all she wrote. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, subscribe for more comic-related things. If you'd like me to torture myself by going frame by frame of other movie trailers, please request so in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of the trailer. What do you think's gonna happen in the movie? Uh, who do you think's gonna die? What order do you think they're gonna die? And also, let me know what kind of obscure 1970s music James Gunn is gonna add to this movie that'll just soar in popularity afterward. And, uh... 
I'll see you next time. Bye.